Welcome back to S Branch Creek. This time we'll be installing two LG Mini Splits on the toy hauler. This is our 2020 Fuel 352 toy hauler. We'll be installing one on the driver's side, just to the left of the fuel door. And on the passenger side, we'll be installing one in place of the fold-up steps. In the garage, there is no heat or air condition, so having a heat pump in this space will make it much more usable. The cost to do this will only be a little more than a Dometic rooftop heat pump. When I ordered the unit, it only comes as an indoor and outdoor unit. You also have to order the 14-4 communication line, and I ordered the 25-foot line set. To start off, I'm going to fab the bracket that the mini split outdoor unit is going to sit on. that the two bases are complete it's time to move on to the brackets that will attach the bases to the RV brackets made up that I'm going to weld to the camper frame. The slides just come in today. The slides amount to the brackets and allow you to pull the unit out and give it better airflow. Now that the brackets are welded to the RV frame, it's time to cut sheet metal to make room for the outdoor unit. All the cuts made and everything fitting good, it's time to bolt it down. I got the unit mounted on the passenger side. I still have to do some trim out, hook up the lines, electrical. I had to remove the fold out steps that were mounted underneath. I'm going to go with a fold up step it folds up in the door like the front door has on the driver's side i'm going to have to relocate the fueling station control box and the tank flush it shouldn't be too hard so let's get started
got the side panel cut out. Now I'm going to measure for my brackets and relocate the tank flush fittings. extra trimming and this side will be good to go. Time to cut out for the fuel control station. cutting out trim pieces to give it a finished look. installed it blocks my rear sewer connection i'm going to extend this out and get it where it's more manageable and easier to get to Moving on into the garage to mount the indoor unit. electrical 
hard lines, and drain line. With our flexible lines connected to the outdoor unit, we can secure everything underneath the RV. Now it's time to install the indoor unit in the living area. Everything hooked up inside. I'm going to go ahead and start putting panels back together. With everything connected, it's time to pull a vacuum. We'll let the vacuum pump run for an hour and make sure we get all the moisture out of the lines. After the pump has run for an hour, we'll let the gauges sit for an hour and see if we have any leaks. Got good vacuum, it's been holding for about an hour. I'm gonna let some refrigerant into the system and see if it holds pressure. The system is holding pressure, so we'll open the valves and put power to the unit. Pretty much got everything put back together. We're gonna go down here and turn on my bottom breaker. That should power up the unit in here. The main reason for installing the mini splits were they're a heat pump unit so you can use them for heating and cooling. They're much quieter and they're a much more efficient unit and get the temperature quicker. Now that the units are up and running, let's see what some of the differences are between the Dometic and the LG Mini Splits. This is the normal noise level inside the RV with no air conditions running. So with the Dometic units, you have the vent you can open to quick dump air to have a fast cool down which really isn't that efficient since you're taking your cool air and sucking it right back into your intake and it cuts down on your efficiency. Closing the vent forces it through the duct system and out the smaller ducts throughout the camper which also decreases your airflow. This is the noise level with one Dometic unit running. turn the mini split on jet mode which is the fast recovery mode and see how loud it is so now we're going to take it out of jet mode which is trying to get the temperature to 65 degrees as fast as it can and put it in auto mode 
and set it for let's say 72 degrees and see how quiet it gets. So with just the Dometic unit running, we're pulling about 15 amps. This is the outdoor noise level with the Dometic running, just one unit running on high. The unit's directly above that door. With one mini split running in jet mode, we're pulling around 9 amps. Now we're with the mini split outdoor unit running on jet mode and we're going to see what kind of noise levels we get out of it. with the phone sitting on top of the unit. They are very quiet. The temperature on the day I done the testing was 90 degrees in the shade. The set of stairs that I bought off Marketplace to replace the fold up steps were too wide. They were 27 inches, and I needed them to be 23 inches. The stairs have been modified. Let's get them mounted in the RV. protect the units from flying rocks and debris, I'll be making mud flaps out of an old tailgate protector.
got the mud flaps fabbed up. Let's get them mounted on the RV. installing the units we have been on several trips and the units have worked very well we have used the units for both heating and cooling it was nice to be able to heat and not have to burn propane with the furnace had our RV not been a toy hauler we would have been able to mount the outdoor units to the back bumper and it wouldn't have taken as much time to install. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you would please like and subscribe, it would really help us out, and we'll see you next time.